Okay. So let's continue with our discussion on the questions that we are solving for uh, management or in the management accounting under uh, budgeting. In the first video, we looked at the question under the purchases budget and you saw how the purchases budget is prepared. In case you missed that video and you are watching this on my YouTube channel, check the description box. I'm going to leave a link on that video so you can watch that video to enable you to prepare well for your examination. Also, remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that anytime we release new videos like this, you'll be the first to be notified. So I provide you with the content that you need and the assistance you require in order for you to prepare and pass your examination. So let's get to our questions for our question for this discussion. And uh, as I mentioned in the previous video, we are looking at a question and the requirement is prepare a, a schedule of the expected cash receipts for three months October through December and determine the expected account receivable balance on 31st December. So this is about trade receivables and uh, we sold goods to our customers. What is the schedule of the money that we're going to be receiving as well as the trade receivables that will be outstanding as at the end of the period. So let me go through the question and then let's look at how we go about it. Then, in case you missed the earlier video, I'm going to link a link on this video on the description. Or if you are watching this on my study portal, uh, you can check the link below this video and you can download the question that we are solving in this video. So let's go through the question. Nyamea Company Limited has forecasted its sales for the last quarter of the financial year ended 31st of December as follows. So we have August, actual sales of 90,000, September, actual sales of 140,000, October, forecast of 180,000, November, 200,000, and then December, 220,000. So even though the examiner is requesting us to prepare the schedule for the receivables for October, November, and December, as well as the trade receivables outstanding or balance at the end of December, the examiner has gone to the extra mile to give us the August actual sales and then the September's actual sales. That is there for a purpose and we are going to be using that in our solution in relation to that. Then there is an additional information there. Nyamiye has experienced cash collections from sales as 40% during the month of sales, 50% in the month after the sales, and 10% the second month after the sales. This is the most important information right here in this question. That is how the company receives the money. So for every sales that a company makes, the money is received in three stages. Number one, we receive 40% in the month of sales. Number two, we receive 50% in the month following the sales. And then number three, we receive 10% in the second month following the sales. Now, this is very critical, this is very important for you to understand how you can work out your schedule and determine appropriately how much will be allocated for your trade receivables at the end of the period as well as the cash that will be received from our customers. So let me give you an example. It means for when we sell in January, for the sales in January, in January we receive the 40%. Then the month after January, which is what? February, we're going to be receiving what? 50% of that same January sales. Then the second month after the sales, which is January, February, and we go to March, we're going to be receiving what? The 10%. So for every month sales, we receive 40% in the month of sales, 50% in the, uh, in the month after the sales, and then 10% in the second month after the sales. That's very critical. All right. So having to write a question, let me go through the requirements again. It says, prepare a schedule or schedule, depending on the school you attended and the teacher who taught you for next. Prepare a schedule of uh, the expected cash receipts from, for the three months, October through December, and determine the expected account receivable balances on 31st December. And that is eight months from the question that you have there in relation to that. So let's see how it goes. Now remember, 
Even though we are preparing for October, November, December, it will be prudent for us to put there uh, everything that we've been given in the question. So let me do our work is in relation to them. So cash receipt schedule or schedule. So we were given August, September actuals and then October, November, December, the expected. So we're gonna go that same way. So August, September. I'm gonna clean up this line. So I can get enough space for that. So September, October, August, September, October, November, and December. You got it? So there you go. Let's slash in our currency side. Better regardless of this. Then what we do here is to bring the sales, okay? The sales, respectively, for the months. So sales. Remember, August and September are the actuals, and uh, October, November, December are the expected. And our focus is usually on this. Now, I'm gonna add some months to it because of the outflow of the cash, so you get the idea. So the sales, respectively, 19,000, okay? 140,000, then 180,000, these are the expected, 200,000, and then 225,000. So these are the sales respectively given to us in the question. So based on these sales, the examiner said that 40% in the month of sales, 50% in the month following sales, and 10% the second month after sales. So I'm gonna pretend and do everything like that for you. So first, let's look at the receipts for the August sales. So for the August sales, in August, we will receive 40%. So I'll my cash here, yeah. So 0.4 times 90,000, that's gonna be 36,000. So we receive 36,000 here. Yeah. The month following the sales, which is September, we're going to be receiving 50% and that should be 45,000. Then the second month after the sales is the October and we'll be receiving 10% of that and that is 9,000. I hope you are following the, the scenario. This is very critical, very, very important. So in the, uh, for the sales of August, that's how it will be received. 40% in the August, 50% in the month following, which is September, and then 10% the second month following the sales. Does it make sense? Okay, so let's go to the next one. Receipts for September's sales. And we go the same way. 40% in the month of sales. So no four times 180,000. That's 72,000, okay? Then 50% in the month following, which is October, and that's gonna be, I think that should be, a, that's gonna be, we are dealing with September sales, right? I made a mistake, so 0.4 times 140,000, and then 180,000, that's why we have that. So 56,000, okay? Then 50% in the, in the month after the sales, 70,000. Then 10% the second month after the sales, and that's gonna be 14,000. Does it make sense? So that is also about the August and September sales. So remember, we are not preparing a schedule for uh, from August to December. No, we are preparing the schedule for October to December. However, the sales that occurred in October and September, part of those sales will be received in 
August and November. That is why the shadow must flow through you in order for you to understand what is going on. Okay, so let's move on. Receipts for October. October. Boom, boom, boom. Now, in October, we're going to be receiving 40%, and that was 72000 So we take that out. The month following October is November, and so we receive 50%, and that should be 19000 Then the second month after the sales, which is December, we receive 10%, and that is 18000 That's 18000 Okay, so that is about October's sales. Then let's move on to November sales. November sales, boom, 40% is going to be there. And that is going to give us 80,000. Okay? Then 50% to be received in December, and that's 100,000. So I'm going to be bringing January. And the 10% to be received in January, that's 20,000. Okay? That's 20,000. That's 20,000. So that is November's sales. Then let's look at the last one December. So in December, we flow the same way. 40% of that, 0.4225, that's 90,000. Then the month after the sales is January, we receive 50%. That's 112500. And then the month after it, which is February, We'll be receiving 10%, that is 22,500. So we are done. We are done for it. So that is the schedule for it. But remember the requirement of the question. What we are interested in is this and this. This is what the examiner said we should do. So this is where our focus is going to be. So this is the cash receipt from customers cash receipt from customer that's what our focus is going to be even though we can expand on all of these so this is 36,000 this is 90,000 then let's add these up So 9 plus 70 plus 72, that should give us 151. Okay. 80 plus 90 is 170 plus 14, 184. Then 190, 208. That's it. That's the cash receipt. So for and like I said, we could extend to this side, but we don't need it though. One, three, two, five hundred, and then two, two, five hundred. So that's a cash receipt for this question there. But as I said, the examiner requested us to do October, November, and what? December. But most importantly, the question is in twofold. We are doing a cash receipt from October to December, as well as the um, accounts receivable balance on 31st December. So this is how much you will receive in December. So anything after December is going to be what? Receivables. Okay? Receivables. So we add these two up. That's 132,500 plus 22,500. And that's going to give us 155,000. So accounts receivables. Accounts receivables at 31st December, it's going to be 155,000. So that is the answer to our question. Very simple, sweet, straight to the point. So you must understand how the schedule goes by. Remember, 
the way we follow the schedule is based on what has been given in the question. 40% in the month of sales, 50% in the month following sales, and 10% the second month following the sales. So that's it about this question on budgeting. And um, I'll see you in the next video as we continue with our discussion. Remember, you can comment below with any questions that you are having on this or other questions that you want us, topics that you want us to cover on in this series of questions that we are practicing in management accounting for your professional qualification examination. So comment below, make sure you share this video and remember to subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next video as we continue with our discussion.